Hello everyone, this is Vicar Kyle and we are continuing with our daily devotionals today. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. We're looking today at a text that we usually see show up near the Advent season as we await the, the coming of Christmas. It shows up in our daily lectionary today and it's kind of a, a nice text as we are our Easter people awaiting Jesus to return in glory to, to bring us to himself, something for us to remember. Uh, so we'll talk about this text, maybe not in the Advent context, but, but in our context uh, in this season of the church here, and even as people who, who have seen the fulfillment of this specific prophecy. Our Bible verses today come from Jeremiah, chapter 23, verses 5 and 6. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. So as we hear this text, there's no mystery. Jesus is this righteous branch coming from David's line and, and lineage. He is the, the shoot of Jesse, as, as we uh, know when we actually did our uh, devotions based on O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, you know, the, the righteous uh, branch of Jesse, shoot of Jesse. What does it mean for us, though, as we await Jesus' return? For us, you know, because uh, I think it kind of ties into a lot of what we've been talking about with these themes of, of Jesus being not just a king, but, but a shepherd of his people, one who, who is taking care of them. And we're going to talk about this a little bit as well tonight in our Psalms Bible study. It just so happens that we're, we'll be covering Psalm 23 and there I think we get the picture of, of the shepherd leading us through life uh, and it's a peaceful life. But that's not exactly at all what, what David writes. He's actually saying that the Lord is my shepherd even if he takes me into dangerous places, even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And so we should view this prophecy from Jeremiah, not just a promise regarding Jesus is coming into this world, you know, being born, uh, being, you know, he really came the first time in humiliation, right? He came even as the, the God who created the world, and yet he, he started out life as, as an insignificant baby. Um, and even living in this world he created, he, he was subject to all uh, of the rules all of the, the afflictions we go through living in a fallen world, all for our sakes. We know that when he returns, it won't be that way. He's returning in glory and power and splendor. He's coming to judge uh, the righteous and the unrighteous. He'll judge the, the righteous to eternal life and the unrighteous, those who, who do not believe and trust in him, to damnation. You know, it's something we don't like to talk about, that, that when Jesus returns, he will be executing justice. Justice was executed the first time, though, uh, only upon himself. He took the judgment we deserved on the cross and died because of that. And that was God executing judgment, executing justice and righteousness. Well, when he returns in the same way, this prophecy applies. He's coming to execute justice. And for us who, who believe in him, for his people, Israel, and we have to remember that as Christians, when we're, we're talking about ourselves, when we look in the Old Testament, we, we can identify as God's people, Israel. Uh, not by birth. None of us, uh, or, or very few of us, are, are born from the, the uh, people uh, of Israel, God's people Israel, but we are all adopted into that family through Jesus Christ. And so the promise that Israel will finally then 
dwell securely. That the, the church, even as we under, undergo persecution, undergo the effects of living in a fallen world, that one day we, we will dwell secure with him. And at that time, we will truly be face to face with our Lord and we'll be able to call him our righteousness. Uh, the Lord himself. Because as we stand before God's throne being judged, our sins, the faults that we have, will not be seen. Only the righteousness of Jesus who, who died for us. Uh, and that's really some of the post-Easter thoughts we can really add to this rich, rich text. And uh, I want to conclude today just by praying as much and inviting you as well to join us tonight. We'll be talking about Psalm 23. And if you haven't been joining us for our Wednesday night Bible study, uh, this might be one you want to join. Um, we pray together. Heavenly Father, uh, we give you thanks that from the line of David, as you promised, Jesus came into this world, that he came first in humiliation to, to suffer uh, for our sake, to take the sins of the world upon himself, and by his suffering, by your judgment upon him, where all of our sins were, were judged onto him, that, that we can give thanks knowing that one day when he returns, we will dwell secure forever, that we will be risen, and that we will see you face to face, and, and we'll be able to proclaim that you, the Lord, are indeed our righteousness. This we pray in the name of your risen Son, Jesus. Amen. Have a wonderful day, everybody. I, I hope that you have a great day. A little technical glitch there. Um, I will see you tomorrow.